Welcome to Kevin Deal Photography, where I take you on my journey through photography. On today's episode, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the 7 Artisan 14mm T2.9 Spectrum Cinema Lens. I'm pleased to announce that I'm launching three Capture One style packs, Metamorphic Portraits, The Sound of Silver, and Rangefinder. These will eventually also be available for Lightroom, so if you go to kevindealphotography.com, scroll to the bottom of the homepage, and join my mailing list, I promise I won't send you spam, but I will let you know the second these release. And now, on to today's episode. Welcome to today's episode. If you're not familiar with Kevin Deal Photography, we do gear reviews, tips, techniques, and tutorials, and sometimes we dive into film. If any of that sounds appealing to you, click the subscribe button below. So throughout the evolution of this channel, I have been diving more and more into the cinema side of things. I started off as a stills photographer, but when you launch a YouTube channel, you better learn how to do video. And of course, in my exploration of video, I decided to get into cinema. I've done reviews of cinema lenses in the past. You can check out my review to the Siri 50mm 1.8 anamorphic lens, link in the description below. But I want to go deeper into cinema lenses, and Seven Artisan reached out to me and asked me to review their new Spectrum series, the 14mm T2.9. And so I took them up on their offer because I want to get better at cinema, and I want to learn more about cinema lenses. So, even though they did give me this lens for free, my opinions are going to be my own. They're going to be independent. I'm going to tell you what I like about this lens. I'm going to tell you what I don't like about this lens. And so right off the bat, something that if you are watching this and you're not a cinema person, I'm going to go through this kind of like you're a beginner because chances are the Spectrum series is going to be purchased by a beginner. If you're a seasoned cinematographer, you're probably not going to learn much from today's episode outside of what this lens looks like. So if you are a beginner, stick around. I'll try to tell you as much as I can about this lens. I'll tell you what I like. I'll tell you what I don't like. So let's start with the first thing that stands out to me, and that is the fact that this is a stout and heavy lens. And that's probably a good thing because professional cinema lenses tend to get beaten up out in the field and I have no issues with this lens. I don't think it's going to have any issues if it bangs into things with that nice metal construction. It appears to have an 82 millimeter filter thread on the front which is good because it's a common filter thread size and you will see that this is a bulbed front element and of course that sticks out and it can get hit by things but rest assured they give you a metal cover that you can put in front of it so you can protect it from getting hit. It comes with the rear lens cap. It also comes with these screws for stops. And if you're wondering what these gears are on the side for you newbies, uh, those are for your focus. And the focus throw on this is 270 degrees. You also have a second set of gears right here for your aperture, which has a maximum wide open aperture of T2.9 and goes all the way to T16. It has a minimum focusing distance of 0.4 meters, which is pretty close for a 14 millimeter uh, cinema lenses tend to have longer minimum focusing distances uh, if you're watching this video and you aren't on the Canon R mount that's okay they make this lens for E L and Z mounts out there so that's something to keep in mind so if you like the way that this lens looks it'll probably look that way or similar to that on your camera system from what I've seen, the Spectrum series is more of a vintage -y look, a little softer, uh, but we're gonna put that to the test today. We're gonna see how razor sharp, and how much contrast there is and all that with this lens. I did mention how robust this lens is. It does come in with a weight of 660 grams. It has an angle of view of 114 degrees. The aperture ring on it is stepless as you find with cinema lenses because you want that to be smooth as you hook it up to your mechanism. The lens is 13 elements in nine groups and consists of 10 rounded aperture blades. Because this lens is a prime and not a zoom, there are only 
two gears here. You'd have a third gear here if it wasn't a prime lens. And the street price of this guy comes in at 460 US dollars. So now that I've given you my general impressions of the build quality of this lens and we've gone through the specs, let's go look at what matters with this guy. Let's see how well this guy does out in the field. We'll see how smooth the focus is. We'll see how smooth the aperture changes are. And of course, we'll see what the image quality is like because that's what the majority of you care about. Okay, so now that I've had some time under my belt with the Seven Artisans 14 millimeter T 2.9 Spectrum Series Cinema Lens, boy, that's a long mouthful. Oh, what are my thoughts? My thoughts are that you're getting a incredibly robust cinema lens, especially for the money. It's sub $500. Now, if you go out and you look at cinema lenses, most of them have a comma in the price tag. So to get something that goes to T 2.9, 14 millimeters, and to get it for less than $500 in the cinema world, that's actually pretty hard to find. So I have to put that under the pros. However, we need to make sure that the quality is up to par too. And I would say that for a sub $500 lens, that yes, this meets or exceeds those expectations. So that puts it into the good value category because you're getting something for less than most people sell it for, for equal focal length, for equal aperture, but you're still getting good quality. Is it as good as a two, three, four thousand dollars cinema lens? No, it is not. It's not a surgical lens per se. It's more of a character lens, which is a little bit more subjective as to whether or not you love it or you don't love it. I already told you that the construction quality on it is fantastic. Definitely want to put that one under the pros. I feel like if I took this on a set and used it all day, I wouldn't have that much to worry about as long as I protected that bulbed front element. Another pro is that that 270 degree focus pull, focus throw is quite smooth. So if you're using it with your gear mechanisms, you have nothing to worry about there. The aperture uh, pull and throw is also smooth. However, I would say it's a little easier to pull the focus than it is the aperture. That's not necessarily uh, abnormal, but just something to keep in mind because if you are watching this, you're likely a beginner. And so you need to know that about this lens. Another thing I noticed from this lens is that the focus breathing was kept to a minimum. And so that's definitely good for a cinema lens. You don't want a ton of focus breathing because if you're doing focus pulling, you want accuracy. Uh, when your actor is hitting their marks, you want to follow them. You don't want your focus to look like it's trying to figure out what it's doing. And so you don't get a lot of focus breathing on this lens. And so we definitely want to put that under the pros. But let's talk about the cons. And there are a few on this lens, it's not clinically sharp. Now that's not necessarily unprecedented. That's not a deal breaker for a lot of you. I mean, I shoot on anamorphic lenses and anamorphic lenses are characteristically soft. And so the key word here is character. Is the character of this lens to your liking? Do you want a surgical spherical lens? If so, you probably wanna avoid this lens because it's not super sharp, but I would classify it as sharp enough. 
Another thing about this lens is it does have some chromatic aberration, especially when it is wide open. That's not necessarily unheard of for budget cinema lenses. And as to whether or not it annoys you, as to whether or not it's a deal breaker for you, that is entirely up to you. For me, that wouldn't be a deal breaker because I know that pretty much all cinema lenses that are less than $1,000 suffer from that for the most part. And there's nothing that's gonna be perfect for less than you know two, three, even higher in price uh, at thousands of dollars. And so uh, is the chromatic aberration on this unbearable? No, it's noticeable when you zoom in, but in the context of a moving motion picture, you're probably not even going to notice. The other thing to keep in mind is that you are going to have to put something on the front of this while you're using it because that bulbed front element is very vulnerable to getting bumped. So make sure that when you're using this guy out in the field that you mind where that front element is and that you don't accidentally bump it up against things because as you know, for those of you who've had scratches on your lenses, the wider the lens, the easier it is to see scratches. And since this is a 14 millimeter lens, scratches on that front element are likely going to ruin your shots. So who should purchase this lens and who should avoid this lens? If you're looking for an ultra wide shot and you're a beginner and you're on a limited budget, this is a fantastic choice for you. I recommend it. I find that the image quality is good enough for cinema work. So as I do this YouTube channel, as clients pay me to do a little more movie work, can this lens accompany me on those professional gigs? I believe that it can. So if you find yourself with that limited budget, but you want an ultra wide shot and you don't have a thousand to three thousand dollars to spend on a cinema lens, I highly recommend you check this guy out. The other person who I recommend purchase this lens is for somebody who's looking for something a little different. A lot of uh, cinematographers and movie makers actually look for tiny quirks and flaws in lenses to get kind of unique shots. Uh, there's a reason why anamorphic lenses are so popular for those lens flares, for those ovals on the outside. Uh, it's that characteristic. Now this is not an anamorphic lens, this is a spherical lens, but if you're looking for kind of those quirky uh, looks, more of a vintagey look, I think that's the word, vintagey. I would say that this lens produces a vintagey, less modern look. And so if you're looking for that, I also recommend you get this lens. So who should avoid purchasing this lens? Well, if you demand the best optical quality out there, you want absolute precision, you want good punchiness, you want sharpness, you want insanely accurate color reproduction, you should avoid purchasing this lens. But the chances are, if you already fall into that category, you already know that you have to spend two, three, four times more for those types of cinema lenses to begin with. But I just want to make that clear to set expectations if you are on the fence about this lens as to whether or not you should purchase this lens. That does it for today's episode. I thank each and every one of you for watching today. I wanna to thank Seven Artisans for allowing me to check this lens out. I hope all of you watching this found this review to be uh, independent. I hope you found it to be truthful. I hope you found it to be useful. And if you did, tell me about that in the comments below. Do you own this lens? Tell me about that in the comments below. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? I wanna know about it. And of course, if you like this channel, I humbly ask you to, click the subscribe button below. And if you like this channel and you wanna hear my more in-depth, uncensored opinions on both photography and videography related subjects, I highly encourage you to go check out my other YouTube channel, the F11 Photography Podcast, which also has audio versions available on both Apple, Spotify, and other major platforms. And until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>